citizens of the Reject Nation, we are here for the penultimate episode of The Last of Us Season 1. I'm not prepared, but I'm so excited. Joining me once again in the hot seat is Tara Erickson. Tara, how you doing today? I'm good, guys. I got a cool t-shirt on. You always daughter's got Roller Skate Club. Sound off in the comments for Tara's Drip. In fact, leave a like for Tara's Drip. Yeah. And why don't you go ahead, before you do anything else, subscribe and... Ring the bell! Ring the bell! Oh, we need a super cut yeah. of every one of those. The people <laughs> love those, Tara. Uh, and I'm glad that you're getting your flowers for that. As Please. well, check out LA Eats and Drinks, which yeah. is Tara's brand new food experience. Experience on the web for you guys. Eating and drinking my way through Los Angeles and With recording it all. Oh, that's wow. right. Don't miss a single moment. Get those tasty morsels. Mm -hmm. We appreciate you guys for not spoiling this experience for us. If you want to get the full-on gamer perspective, go and check out Greg and Andrew's Last of Us reactions. And as well, if you want to enjoy all of our reactions uncut with everything that doesn't make these highlight reels, come on over to patreon.com slash the real rejects where you can sync up with your own copy, enjoy the full experience, and uh, last but not least, guys, uh, we got a new Last of Us inspired t-shirt that Greg and the Zero Edition team what? put together, and uh, if you want one, they're available now in the Real Rejects ShopZeroEdition.com store. Got so beanies cool. and hoodies and all sorts of fun stuff over there. Tara, did I forget anything? Is there anything you want to tell the people? No, except I would like that t-shirt. And... Alright, well you're an extra large now, here yes. we go. Let's jump into this. <laughs> You get this song down yet, John? I'm working on it. Okay. It's it's actually not as complicated as you would imagine. <laughs> It's just about getting the mood and the timing right. So the maybe mood. by the finale episode, I'll have a little sum sum for you guys. Yeah, you better have a vibe going on because if I'm gonna wear all yellow, you know, <laughs> to try to virus it up, I'm holding you, fungus I'm holding it you up. To that. I mean, hashtag you, Terra fungus. Yeah. <laughs> God, now I have to go buy all yellow cl clothing. Just glue some buttered lettuce to your face. I really dug my own grave. Revelation twenty one. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. It's Los Angeles this week. <laughs> and I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God. Church in a steakhouse, I do not mind that. <laughs> and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. What, God, God, get in there. Yeah, where's the get in there, God. tears coming down? They're not being wiped. He shall provide. Where's the steak? And God will wipe away all tears from their eyes. Neither will there be any more pain. Do you know what that means? There's a pop quiz coming up, are you sure? <laughs> when can we bury him? Oh. Uh -huh. The ground is too cold to dig. We'll bury your father in the spring. <coughs> oh. That's going to stink. The cutlets of Christ finally busts out the steak. <laughs> but at least here in winter, like his body will be perfectly preserved until the spring. True. This is probably like an ice cube out there. How much do we have left? Keep the whole town on rations. Maybe a week. Two at best. <sighs> uh. I sense doubt in there. I haven't lost faith in you, David. You're just scared. Not from them. From you. I still believe. It's been, uh, the last six months have been hard. But I need to know you're with me. Believe better. Now go get our guns. We're going hunting. Right. He never comes back. <laughs> Just falls in the pile of guns. They all go off. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, feel free to enlighten and or roast us for that buddy boy casting there. <laughs> With some jerky. The smell of jerky always gets me up in the morning. Just put it right under his nose. I'm gonna be right back, okay? Is she gonna try to go hunt? Oh, is she gonna run into those people out there? Ah, uh, I saw her look. Okay, yeah, we see you. Oh, 
for a while. <laughs> Dang. The apocalypse seems so peaceful when you're not being attacked by butter lettuce heads. <laughs> oh. But it's so cute. Can't you just keep it as a pet? Oh. <gasps> oh. Ellie. No. Ah. Ooh. Okay. Frostbite. God, that would hurt <laughs> so bad. <laughs> Oh. Ooh. Okay. Now that's a prize. Oh, you got this. Come on, you got it, girl. <laughs> Make it a kill shot, please. Oh, no, no, no. D kill him. No, I hate it. I hate it. No. Shit. Those people are going to take her thing. She already started on it. Feel it. God sent us this wounded deer. Uh, 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 <laughs> the venison of Christ. What do you think? I don't see anybody. Oh. Oh. Yeah. You think we can just take it? Yeah. Quickly, whoever shot it's probably nearby. Damn. Dang it. Don't! Ooh. Oh, heck yeah. Drop your rifles! <laughs> now! Yeah. Yeah, girl, get it. Uh-huh. <laughs> now help me carry this back to Joel. Any sudden moves, I put one right between your eyes. Ditto for buddy boy. <laughs> my name is David. This is my friend James. We're from a larger group, women, children, and we're all very, very hungry. I'm from a large group, too. Also hungry. Not with biblical names. <laughs> what do you need? We have boots. Medicine? We do. Back in our village, your buddy boy can go get it. <laughs> Talk to Howard. He's got a case with some penicillin. Bring back two bottles and a syringe. Ooh. It's not code, James. Do it, as I said. It, huh. Come on, man. Come on, man. You're going to get half the deal. Scoot, scoot. Buddy boy. Yeah, buddy boy. Buddy man. It's like, well, in John chapter five. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we got a really King Herod situation on our hands. <laughs> That's your dad's gun? He the one that's sick? That's why you're out here on your own? <laughs> Smart. It's a four-mile round trip back to our settlement. It's going to be a while before James gets back. We could take shelter. Bring him with us. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, jeez. I'm just glad he's dead and not in pain. You're their leader? Yes. Is this some weird cult thing? Well, you sort of kind of got me there. I am a preacher, but just pretty standard Bible stuff. Prefer the term congregation. And as we wandered, we picked up new people along the way until we ended up here. Well, your luck had to run out sooner or later. <laughs> I believe everything happens for a reason. So I sent four of our people to a nearby town to to scavenge what they could. Only three of them came back. And the one that didn't was a father. He had a daughter just like you. And her dad was taken from her. But we were able to eat him. He was murdered <laughs> by this crazy man. That crazy man was traveling with a little girl. Oh, oh. no. Uh. Everything happens for a reason. Whoa. Oh. James, lower the gun. Whoa, oh, dude. Shit. Oh, weird. Dicey. Oh, my goodness. Did you bring the medicine? Yeah, but... Throw I... it to her. David. You want to eat or you want to get vengeance? Yeah. I would rather eat. Back away. Uh, shit. You won't survive for long out there. I can protect you. Get that whole deer, though. Dang it. Yeah. So you're just going to let it get away? No, I have a feeling he has a different plan in mind. Let Jesus uh, take the wheel. He'll, he'll, yeah. he'll find some <laughs> fitting retribution for this. Joe. Joe, where the f*** do I put this? Oh, God, right? No. The thing? No, I think no, it's no, like no, in no, the no, arm? No, 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 in no. the arm, maybe? Ah, okay. Okay. 
I hope you got the dosage right as well. I have some liver and onions tonight. Yum, yum. What is it? Venison. <laughs> Again? <laughs> Can you find us like an elk or something? <laughs> yes, we found a girl who was with the man who took Alec from us. When the sun rises, I'll lead a group out to pick up her trail. Won't be hard to find in the snow. And we'll bring that man to justice. Of course you will. You should kill both of them. Oh! Okay. Nope. Nope. Peeling back the layers. I'm like, what's this guy's deal? Okay. <laughs> Seems way too reasonable up front. It's a bit culty now. I know you think you don't have a father anymore. But the truth is, Hannah, you will always have a father. Ooh. And you will show him respect when he's speaking. <laughs> You're just everyone's daddy. Oh, yeah. Who'd you lose? Who, who are you trying to fill a void with all these people with? He lost his steakhouse, man. <laughs> oh, the sound design in this scene. A lot of people in a studio just <laughs> clanking. <laughs> Props to the Foley team. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Killing it, Ellie. Become an RN. Aww. Aww. Two horse garage. You're gonna go out and cover your trap. Oh no. Okay. Uh. Aww. He's thirsty. <laughs> Is that a bird of prey? Symbolism. Hmm. <laughs> Birds of death. Shite. Now you know, kid. Yep. yep. Okay. Good, good, good. This man's not already dead. He's dangerous. About the girl. If we leave her out here, she'll die. Yeah, maybe that's God's will. <laughs> Don't talk to me about God's will. I decide God's will. Keep your mouth shut, buddy boy. <laughs> okay, Joel, Joel, wake up. Joel, wake the f*** up, Joel. Oh, oh my God. Ellie, you're going to have to, like, do some shit. Uh. Oh. There are men coming, okay? I'm gonna lead them away from you. But if anybody makes it down here, you can kill them. You got it? <laughs> oh, gosh. God. What an interesting presence for him this episode. Oh, man. Oh, bad feeling, bad feeling. I am so scared right now. <laughs> uh, the anxiety. <sighs> Oh shit! <laughs> oh, 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 okay. No, no, don't shoot the horse or her. Okay. Uh, Alive. Uh, Alive. Shucks. Oh boy. Yes. Ride like the wind. <laughs> if you want him, come and claim oh, him. Oh God! Please don't be a good shot, buddy boy. No. Oh, oh, no. The no. No, 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 no. I don't like it. Uh, are they going to eat that horse now? They better. Do it. <laughs> what? No. Father says no. Y'all got some penance to do now. Two of you with me. Drag the horse. The rest of you, stay here, go door to door. Start knocking. You so hungry for vengeance? Deliver it. Yeah, it's a cult. Yeah, it's a cult. It's a cult, 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 cult. Uh, 
<laughs> Shucks, Joel. That's right. Wake up. Come on, get up. <sighs> Hope you're good at knife throwing or playing dead. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Goodness. Yes, Joel! Oh, oh my god. Yes. I'm still so worried for him. <laughs> I am teeth. Oof. Thank you. I started worrying you wouldn't wake up. Why am I in a cage? You're a dangerous person. You've certainly proven that. (laughs) You can't survive on your own. No one can. I'm not on my own. That part of your life, it's ending. And what I'm offering you is a beginning. But if you can't find a way to trust me, then yes, you are alone. Only I can help you. Hmm. You have to remember, Ellie, he owned a steakhouse. (laughs) That's right. That's right. Trust the Outback man. (laughs) Trust Ruth's Chris over here. (laughs) Timothy. (laughs) The beards on this crew are amazing. Oh, shit. (laughs) Yes. That was nice bait. Good job, Joel. He Damn, carried him man. all the way out there. Up the stairs. Leave him alone. Oh, you're next. Oh, please. I don't know any girl. Oh! oh. oh. <laughs> yeah. He can't help you. You focus right here. Or I'll pop your f***ing kneecap off. Oh. Oh. He'll do it, too. Come on, now. She's alive. Where? Oh, oh, the town. What town? Silver Lake. Did you say Silver Lake? I think so. I live there. (laughs) Not for long. (laughs) It's a resort. A resort? (laughs) You're going to point to where we are. (laughs) Where the resort is. Oh, that's great. And it better be the exact same spot your buddy points to. (laughs) Oh, man. Go ask him. He'll tell you I'm not lying. Go ask Alan Moore. You mother you. I ain't telling you shit. Okay. No. I believe him. No. <laughs> wow. Dude. Joel. Oh. Whoa. Cold, but also effective. Cold-hearted Damn. killer. That was that was hard. That was intense. <laughs> Don't trust the food. I knew it! Oh. Damn it! I, I, I knew they were focusing on that food too much. This is the Donner party. Oh. For what it's worth, this is just dear meat, I swear. <laughs> You're gonna chop me up into little pieces. I'd rather not. <laughs> if you wanna judge me. Judge you? You're eating people, you sick! <laughs> But what was I supposed to do? Let them starve? Yeah, maybe. You don't believe that. I don't think your friend would either. Didn't he take another man's life to save yours? He was defending himself. Keep Joel's name out of your mouth. Yeah. You see a lot. So do I. And you know what I see when I look at you? Me. (laughs) You have a violent heart. And I should know. Because I do too. I've always had a violent heart. But then the world ended and I was shown the truth. By God. 
No, but cordyceps. <laughs> sure. It feeds and protects its children, and it secures its future with violence if it must. It's true. Why are you telling me all of this? I'm a shepherd surrounded by sheep, and all I want is an equal. <laughs> oh. What about my friend? I can tell the others to stop looking for him. They'll spare him. <laughs> if he leaves us in peace, they will just let him go. They do what I tell them to do. They follow me. Yeah. For how long, though? Too late. They're already dead, buddy. Think of what we could do together. We'd make this place perfect. Imagine the life we could give them. Joel just needs to come in now. You be my daughter wife? No. 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 Ah! <laughs> oh, yes! 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 Oh, wow. <laughs> you look. Oh, yes. <laughs> no! Dang it. Ugh. Allie. What? <laughs> Tell them that Ellie is a little girl who broke her finger. Yes. <laughs> How did you put it? Hmm? Tiny little pieces? Oh, wow. Is he at the steakhouse? Oh, buddy. Oh, God. Gotta find Grogu, man. Yeah. Come on, Din Djarin. Okay. It's good. Survival horror. <laughs> oh, the oh, horse. horse. Right. No. Oh, yeah. my God. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, oh God. The meat freezer's open. Okay. <laughs> All right. Ugh. Shite. Oh, jeez. Shut up. Oh. Oh, whoa. Oh, your chance. No, I'm infected. I'm infected. Uh, oh no. And now so are you. Roll up my sleeve. Look at it. Look at it. Oh. <laughs> of course. What did you say? Everything happens for a reason, right? Oh. oh. Now she would have turned by now. This isn't real. That looks pretty f Did she still transmit? <laughs> oh, oh! Buddy boy! No! Jesus! Oh. Oh, <laughs> oh, man. Oh, my goodness. Where is everybody? Not that I'm complaining. <laughs> uh. Oh, okay. Oh, oh. buddy boy. Sorry, buddy boy. We're eating good tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the cult? <laughs> oh. Ah, oh! They're busy preparing some Kool-Aid. Hmm. You either stay, save the steakhouse, or go kill Ellie. Save the steakhouse? Yeah. There's no way out, Ellie. Doors are locked, and I have the keys. Ellie? Uh, you better save your steakhouse, buddy. Come on. How are you going to cook up all those dead bodies? I know. <laughs> Think of the mouths to feed. What's the secret? Or are you just that special? Yep. She is. No one likes being humiliated, Ellie. <laughs> you don't know how good I am. What? You don't know what I could have given you if you had just let me. Oh. 
I wonder what this guy's like on a date. <laughs> I've decided you do need a father. So I'm going to keep you. And I'm going to teach you. Oh. <laughs> oh! No! Uh. Okay. Uh. Oh. Goodness, no. Oh. I thought you already knew. The fighting is the part I like the most. Oh, oh, God damn it. There's no fear in love. Oh. What <sighs> the? No, no. Yes. Yes, yes Eleanor. Yes, oh. axe him to yes, death. Yes, as many times as it takes. <laughs> yes. Yep, 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 yep. Yes. Get your catharsis, girl. Go God. Take that axe and get the hell out of there. How many thwacks was that, too? Jeez. Not enough. <laughs> His head's probably just mush. Oh, no. The axe. You guys know how I feel about weapons being left behind. <laughs> take the freaking axe. <laughs> or, or fashion yourself a new one. Oh, oh thank God. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. It's me. It's me. Okay. It's okay, baby girl. Oh. Oh, I got you. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> I love that so many of these oh. episodes end with them walking off into the distance. Oh, God. Ah, oh, okay. <gasps> I need a, I need a, a breather. <laughs> oh. Well. Yeah. That was a hilarious and heartwarming <laughs> episode. <laughs> That gave me faith in the future of humanity. <laughs> what do you think, Tara? What do you think of uh, episode eight? Okay. Uh, oh man. Oh. Yeah. Um. Well, I'll just say the first thought. I mean, that's so sweet. The end it made me cry. Yeah. But I like that. My assumption was Joel is going to pop in and save her, and I like that. She, we have now just seen how much she has learned from Joel and just how strong she is as a human that she didn't need it. She saved herself and Joel was there obviously to take her at the end, which was nice. But, um, I like that we didn't, I mean, of course he killed those guys before and then <laughs> got to her, but I'm just saying at the end, I really liked how she did the kill. <laughs> yes, and that absolutely. it wasn't like Joel coming in and shooting that guy. I'm like, no, I hope you die by her axe in her hands. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally, yes. hundred percent. And I do quickly want to shout out Troy Baker because yeah, that in the moment, uh, I, I'm sure the comments have filled up already, and I appreciate you guys for for hipping us because yeah, I wouldn't have picked it up in the moment. In fact, this experience, Greg sent me like a potential thumb for his reaction with Andrew, and he was like, "Do you recognize this actor?" And I was like, "Well, that's Buddy Boy, it's James, but uh, I, I don't know who the actor is." And then it slowly like an echo started to come back to me, and then he was like, "It's Troy Baker," and I was like, "Oh." Oh, so, you know, he must have greater importance. And sure enough, you know, there, there's your voice of Joel right there, which is really cool given what uh, the, you know, dynamics of the episode had him ultimately have to do in certain contexts. That's a name I have become aware of over the years due to various animated projects and especially going through the DC animated stuff with Koi recently. I've seen his name pop up a lot there as he's been Batman and Joker and various other characters. And yeah, just the way that they have shown love to those actors who help bring these iconic characters 
characters that people love so much from the game to life and giving them roles. I mean, especially him, you know, the guy who played Tommy was a little more of a side character, but especially Troy Baker here, I thought left a, a, a real big impression and did a great job, you know, with just the tension and the conflict within that character of James um, and alongside Scott Shepard too, uh, as David, really great back and forth and just that sense of history they have with each other. I haven't done a ton of excess reading into parallels with the game and, and you know, diving too deep into any number of details that could lead to spoilers and whatever else. You want to keep these fresh. So yeah, you can enlighten us to any other pertinent info about him as it pertains to The Last of Us in the comments. But I did want to make sure we at least touched on that because, uh, yeah, in the moment and, and we were talking during the credits and stuff like that. So I just didn't catch it. And uh, and yeah, now I will not forget Troy Baker's face, but uh, but this is the experience that taught it to me. So, so yeah. Thanks for hipping us, though, <laughs> or roasting us or both. Back to the review. It's fascinating because <laughs> they give you so many things to be suspicious of that do kind of ultimately come true. But I, I liked, yeah, the way they drew this impossible seeming scenario and then found their way out of it. It, it, like you said, in that way where it is her doing most of the heavy lifting for herself. And it's like, yeah, Joel is able to, you know, get back up on his feet, but he's not just like full adrenaline, you know, kicking ass and just moving like it's nothing. And uh, like if there's one thing I did wonder about and they do it, uh, I think, a fine enough job in the dialogue of basically addressing that. Yeah, like most of these people who live here, they're not violent. They need somebody to lead them. They're probably very scared. And so even though part of me was like, where is everybody during all of this? Yeah. Uh, having, you know, the pastor and buddy boy, uh, David and James, I think their names were, having them as your sort of main forces uh, in the camp and then having all those other guys out looking for Joel and everything like that. Like it seemed at least geographically like, OK, they put all their kind of uh fighting ready people on both of these sides of this mission so so geographically that made sense but yeah just having this debate and having this unfolding of this guy's character i thought was really fascinating whoever that actor is uh who played what is his name i think it was david uh he just did such a great job and it's uh, he endears or at least me he endeared me and I thought they did a, a great sort of representation of the peeling back of the layers because at first you're like okay, I see how we're on two sides of a conflict, and while we probably can't fully make this amicable, you don't seem like that bad of a guy, and I get the position that you're in. But sure enough, <laughs> the deeper you get into the episode and the more desperate circumstances become for him in particular, you start to see all the layers peeled back. And yeah, like this is, you know, like the, the worst guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know and it's funny like i'm curious to know what people think because on the one hand like you know he's presented as a religious leader and so part of you is like okay it had to go down this route i guess not only is he yeah you know more of a cult leader in this here and now than he is truly like a pastor or a savior even though he comes across very much that way but then yeah he's got the violence and he's also got the you know, in, in appropriate urges. Like that whole scene I thought was great in the cage for multiple reasons, but partly it just becomes so uncomfortable when you're like, I can't tell if this is just a trust building thing or if he really is implying like, no, you'll be my girl wife and we will lead this together with Very you by my side. subtle grooming. Yeah, and it's like, ah, uh, like it's, I thought they earned it really well because on the one hand, you know, you, I, I think that's a place th that you would naturally, if you want to make a twisted pastor character, I feel like that's one of the places you directly go. Um, but I thought the way they portrayed it and the way that actor portrayed it um, just lent a lot of credence to it. It was really engrossing. That, like, Especially because you couldn't tell when he's like, we don't kill. Like that girl who's like, kill him. And then he's like, Bah! like <laughs> killing's wrong. But really... <laughs> When you think back on it, when he's like alive, you're like, oh, because you want to keep her for yourself, probably. Yeah, right? you want somebody who isn't already entangled with the rest of the with camp. The rest that of you the can group. Develop this new dynamic with. You can lock her in a cage, do some slight grooming. And Not let her if it doesn't else. turn out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the eater if it doesn't turn yeah. out right. Which, which that too, I, I loved the way they. I loved the way they 
used and didn't use music throughout this mm. because when they have that first like dinner scene where everyone's just chowing down and it's all the sounds of of cutlery and eating and you're just sitting here in this situation and you're again I think designed to think there's got to be people in there if they're having a food scarcity there has to be some kind of Donner party parallel you know where we got to eat people <laughs> and uh and I love the way they held on to that until the very end and then Ellie sees the cuz you know she's in the cage and just the visual cues let you in on the idea of like this looks like a kind of kitcheny room for to have this cage <laughs> in. yeah and then you see the ear and all that and uh and I like the way they handled that too it's like it's one of those conclusions that I think is pretty easy to get to in a scenario like this but I thought they represented it with a lot of credence to make it believable and not feel contrived yeah, it also came off very culty in the episode when they bring in the the deer or the elk or whatever it was. It oh, was yeah. a deer, right? Deer. Whatever. They bring it in and venison. everyone is so venison. Everyone is so silent. It's so not. It is just him talking and leading in the beginning. One person says a thing and he is like absolutely not having it. And then when they bring it, you, you assume that they would be excited or happy and that's when you really know like uh something's like off here something yeah this whole place like if you talk you're probably yeah exactly and like he smacks that girl upside the face and everybody seems very sort of nobody stands up like there are dudes in that room not just women and children right there's other guys there that could be like yo man like we shouldn't be doing this and i'm like oh does that mean that you and your lackeys they all have guns and nobody else does and your lackeys will like shoot anybody who stands up to you because like now we're talking like church mafia sure no and it makes you wonder like it gives you a lot to then think about like yeah is this guy taking in people who are just docile and only the ones who are inclined to believe him like do accidents befall or do they you know take out people who just aren't with you know, their version of the program or, yeah. or his version of how this is supposed to go. And uh, and to his whole story about like, <laughs> I love that that flip of the inspiration of like, I found God after the apocalypse. Mm-hmm. And then realizing later on that, no, nah, you probably didn't. You just probably w- were somebody in your previous life as a teacher or whatever, a math teacher or whatever he was. Who probably, you know, felt beholden to so many systems and probably felt very small. And now you've found, he, he says that whole thing about, you're like me, you're a leader, you know, you you know what people need and you know how to, you know, persuade and protect people and all that stuff. And, and he talks about, like, I got these people to look out for. They love me. You know, they look up to me. And you could tell he probably, you know, has lived a life where he would have always wanted that level of status and grandeur and now he's finally able to achieve it and also feed his worst inclinations along the way yeah Yeah. i feel like he's also smart enough to go what's the biggest ploy i can use to gather a group of people and make them feel safe sure religion yeah bible let's just like become this thing that most people are like in when you're close to death, most people are like, I didn't pray, started praying, right? They're yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I was in a plane crash, it's going down, you're like, saying your prayers. So it's it's like, oh yeah, he's probably smart enough to use that as his ploy. Yeah, yeah, totally. I found God. No, you you just became a god. Yeah. Uh but but yeah, like so many great like so many great characterizations that I think really help the the tropier aspects of, you know, the things. There there are nuts and bolts of what happens here that we've seen before, but I thought that they really well realized both the character sides of that and just the geography again, like the way that they split the two groups up and they've got, you know, these guys hunting Joel and them taking Ellie back. Like they really draw this impossible feeling situation. And then when Ellie, you know, the escalation of Ellie making these moves against these people and sort of never relenting on her instincts of distrust for them. uh, Like when she finally has him cornered and she's just beating him with that cleaver, like you really feel all that rage and pain and anguish come out both for this situation, but probably just all of what's been pent up up until now, you know, and, and for as much as Ellie has been sort of uh, carefully guided and handled in terms of like weapons and when and how to use them, like this was just full on, just like let it all out. girl. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, I really felt for her in those moments. And, and then 
when Joel comes back at the very end, like I, I think we both got got teary eyed because you just feel the sort of desperate relief that it's like a very specific life moment that I feel like most everybody has at some point, but they're rare. That sort of like I am just overcome right now and I'm not even fully aware of my surroundings. And then you sort of clap into somebody close, a, a warm, you know, comforting figure. And then in a different way, it all comes out. Then, then the, you know, then the vulnerability, you know, overflows rather than the rage. Yeah. And, uh, and I thought that was kind of beautifully handled there. Yeah. I mean, up until that point, she, Ellie was always just a strong, snarky, smart girl who could handle herself sure. and dealt with the independence of Joel. And she had that same independence, but at that moment she was just a little girl yeah. who needed Joel in that moment. And, you know, he is now like her actual father figure, right? He, he is now a, a foundation for her, like a rock. And he has always been there. And in that moment, it was like, you just saw Ellie as like, oh, she's a kid. But we've we haven't seen that. I don't even think from the top. I think it's like now in episode eight, we've seen her in that moment, just in that moment <laughs> after that yeah. you're like, she's a kid, you know, and she needed she needed like a hug from a, a, a like a family member because Joel is like family now, whether they yeah. say it out loud or not. And I think that's why I found it so touching. You just finally go, oh, yeah, Ellie's a badass, but like. She's still a kid. Sure. And like, that's a great point because especially in this episode, so much of it is like the exact opposite. Like my, my companion, my parental figure, my friend is completely out of commission. I got to figure out everything. I got to ha- hold up these guys and make sure I get out of this situation. I got to find us some food. I got to find us medicine. I got to figure out where and how to administer the medicine all on my own. And then, yeah, get put in a cage, almost eaten. It's like it's it's way more than anybody should ever have to deal with. But then also on the heels of everything else, you know, it's like even in the mall with Riley, she's not fully able to. There, there are moments and glimpses where they get to forget about things and just have fun and be kids. But this was a different version. This was, yeah, like a, the most vulnerable the just, I need a hug. Please console me. This is too much to handle. Right. Yeah. 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 And, uh, and too, I mean, I love, (laughs) I love the way they've geographed the time too, because you know, you have Joel basically on his back for since two episodes ago through the last episode up until here. And so they made like a really nice gradual, uh, just, you know, just getting him back on his feet was a nice gradual process that I thought was pretty, tangible and then when he's got those two guys it's like yeah joel seems better equipped in these situations than these guys probably are despite the fact that they are in perfectly good health so even there i was pretty pretty easily able to suspend that disbelief and then when he's got that guy with the knife and he's like point on the map and he does the kind of the same thing as he did with the couple from a few episodes ago the the native american couple where he's like you know you tell me where and then you tell me where and if they don't match and you know obviously it plays out different here but uh (laughs) that whole i believe him uh but yeah like really well designed episode in terms of both what it does for Joel and Ellie and as well as getting a, a yet another glimpse into what how certain people will respond what life might be like you know in this situation yeah because we thought before like three episodes ago that I was like oh the what are you call they weren't the fireflies over that other, were they the fire no in that group that I'm like she's she's the cult leader they were just a group yeah. that was weird. And they weren't a cult. This is a cult. You <laughs> know, in like an apocalypse, there's going to be, there's going to be some cults. And now we got to one where they're eating people and he's just like slapping anybody who talks. Yeah. He is clearly <laughs> status one yeah. <laughs> of this yeah. cult. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And people like, I love again, the way that they let you bounce off of those things because at first you're just like, Oh, these people are just meek and, and tired and cold, but also probably no, they're also probably afraid Scared. to speak up to this guy. Yeah. yeah. Like there's probably a lot of uh, uh, like buried, pushed down fear amongst these people. And so I wonder how they're going to fare now that they don't have any of their heavyweights. I just find it so odd that if I was in that group and obviously he had to build trust to get their loyalty, meaning he couldn't be slapping them around right away. Right. 
So, but then once you see that he does do that and they're like, they're all just seem so meek. I'm like, it's so crazy to me that they're not holding a meeting to start a riot. I would like steal a weapon in the middle of the night and just shoot him. Sure. And all of his buddy boys. Buddy boy. Uh, and be like, I'm going to lead it now. I'm nice. Let's go get food. Like, I, I find it so odd. I know that it's pro- it's very difficult and you're afraid to lose your life. But I'm always like, man, you got it. Come on now. Like, start a riot and kill the bad people. You got people. the numbers. Like, yeah. you have the numbers, you know? And it makes you, like, this is one of those episodes that gives you so many different things directions to wonder in because yeah that i'm like what how much did these people know about this guy and what is we peer in on what appears to be like the average day here but yeah like you could every time we visit a new pocket you're like yeah there's a whole life happening here you could do a whole show just about this if you wanted to i mean you know not that i'm saying that should happen obviously the joel and ellie story is part of the bread and butter that holds this all together but there's yeah just so much interesting potential to these things and and you know, the way they realize this character, like, yeah, he is pretty villainous by the end, especially this whole, like, this is my favorite part, this is the struggle. Like, but, you know, there are elements of the character at times that aren't 100% that, and that's the interesting drama. That whole thing yeah. about, like, Cordyceps isn't evil. Cordyceps is just doing its natural thing, and it's that's just true. perpetuating itself, protecting its own it's it's you know ensuring the longevity of its species which you know is an interesting thing to acknowledge because yeah it is just sort of a force of nature that that happens and i love the use of the bite too and making us wonder about that because i don't think we've ever had that we have before, it like have where it's like where oh she if bites she somebody you know. right and do they become infected yeah yeah so, i was like oh wait is he going to like if we're with him long enough is he going to turn because she lives with that inside of her right mm-hmm. i don't know who knows yeah i hope he doesn't because then he'd still be around sure yeah. like i just just please let him be oh and it's a cool counterweight too because she does the thing with uh uh what was the little boy sam she she tries to apply her blood as a cure right. and then she tries to use it the opposite direction here and i like that we don't kind of have a full we don't know yeah if, if it's gonna yeah which work. direction that goes in and it's gotta be not that easy either way right um, but he also, I mean, if he turned into a butter lettuce head, he would just be, it would be all falling off. I mean, she chopped him up good. She chopped him up he real be, good. He would just be, he'd be salad, really, honestly. He's a chopped salad. Yeah, for yeah, sure. He's a chopped salad. Nobody wants to eat him, though. <laughs> Even though they're they're used to eating people. No oh, thanks. Oh, God. Yeah. Not the, you, buddy. And the way they, they handled that, I mean, yeah, you like, you know, in that, that dinner scene, you're able to hone in and be like, I don't know, man. Yeah. I don't know. And then and then when they reveal it, they don't go full bore into just like cannibal land, but it, it's enough. It's like you see the bodies hanging up in their clandestine meat freezer and you see the, the someone's got to clean up the ears, man. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody's got to clean up the kill floor. Oh, um, gnarly. But yeah, this was this was a really fascinating episode and really well handled, really interesting drama great performances across the board especially from i mean uh, from bella ramsey especially pedro pascal of course but also the guest cast great use of music great use of atmosphere you really feel the chill and the cold of everything and and even the tension of the fire at the end him kind of looking of like which which of these do i focus on and do i just let this room burn for my own selfish desire or do i take care of the greater good arguably and douse this fire and Mm. make it so that we still have a dining hall to eat people and (laughs) i don't know this is one of those episodes where i think you could go on forever and ever talking about it but uh but yeah this was this was great i thought bravo and i cannot wait to see what the finale holds because Uh, geez yeah so i'm sad yeah. I don't want it to be over. Yeah, me neither. Yeah. R.I.P. their horse. Uh, R.I.P. that deer. Yeah. And uh, and yeah, you got anything else before we hit the road? No. No. Well, guys, leave a like, leave a comment with your thoughts on the episode. Uh, are you excited for the end of the season? Are you sad that we'll have to wait uh, for another heaping helping of The Last of Us? Leave any of your thoughts down below. That aren't spoilerific, because obviously you get the point. And uh, last but not least, let's let's do a page. <laughs> Gabriel, if this episode could have used anything, it was a guardian 
angel, Gabriel. <laughs> ha ha ha. You see what I did there? Religious episode. I saw Religious it. shout out. Mm-hmm. Gabriel, though, I mean, you are such a lovely and kind presence at our Patreon. You are the pastor I would follow mm. during the apocalypse. You know, if you made some kind of realization in your life, you're like, you know what? I need a flock. I need to extol my virtues to the people. I would be like, yes, please fill my brain. I don't want to think for myself anymore. I'm tired of doing that. That's why I do most days. And it's hard. It's confusing. Just tell me what to think, Gabriel. Yeah. Um, the only thing I think I would say to you is just to keep your pledge indefinitely, forever. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, otherwise, you, we will not follow. Absolutely not. No, that's that's the price. You know, we everybody has a price, and this is ours. Yeah. So uh, you know, the, may may the Lord be with you, and also with you, and uh, and also with you. Is that how it goes? I have to say it back, right? Everybody in church Has goes to, down a chain, and they're yeah. like, also with you, also, also with, with you. you. Everybody, with you. by the end of the ceremony yeah. or the service, you know, has That's said it's also four with hours? you. Yeah, okay. yeah that takes up most of it. Got it. <laughs> There's like a couple scriptures, a little bit of a sermon. We pass out the a Eucharist, but mostly song. it's people shaking hands being like, also with <laughs> you, also, also, with, also you, with you, also with you. I don't want to leave anybody out. People pleasing at church. Okay, I get it. <laughs> Anyway, Gabriel, thanks for joining us, and uh, we'll catch you next month. Love you, buddy.